In January of 1982, Stephen Callahan was attempting to sail alone across the Atlantic Ocean in his handmade sloop, the Napoleon Solo, prophetically named after the resourceful American agent from the TV show, The Man from Uncle. My name is Napoleon Solo. During a midnight storm, something punched a massive hole in his boat, flooding it with water and forcing him to grab what little supplies he could and board a life raft. Callahan spent a mind-boggling 76 days stranded alone in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the incredible story of how he survived. But before we start, do everyone here a favor and subscribe to the Weird History channel and leave us some tasteful and lovely comments below. Stephen Callahan, a boat designer and writer, was attempting to sail across the Atlantic Ocean on a solo trip when a whale struck his boat. Callahan's sloop sank quickly, and he was frantically trying to inflate his life raft at the same time, so he had to grab what supplies he could with almost no time to think. Imagine trying to pack the family's station wagon for a long road trip while your house is burning down. In fact, Callahan had to dive down into his sunken boat in order to retrieve some crucial items, including fishing line, a water purifier, and a spear gun. To make things worse, he couldn't see anything. He had to locate everything underwater by memory. For food, all he managed to grab was some peanuts and raisins, baked beans, eggs, cabbage, corned beef, and eight ounces of water. Even with the strictest rationing, his supplies wouldn't last more than two and a half weeks. Callahan had to rely on old-fashioned navigational techniques to try and get rescued. He built a device called a sextant, a tool that measures the distance between the horizon and celestial objects like stars and planets to roughly estimate where he was and where he should steer his raft. Using the North Star as his guide, Callahan aimed his raft towards the West Indies. He eventually made it to land, but the journey took much, much longer than he initially anticipated. Nothing like taking the old scenic route. In order to survive over two months stranded alone at sea, Callahan split his personality into two different characters, the captain and the crewman. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense considering I have to invent two personalities just to decide if I look fat in my new sweater. I don't, by the way. The captain would make tough decisions and shout out orders for the crewman to follow, which helped keep Callahan from panicking while maintaining control of his traumatic situation. The two didn't always agree, though. For example, Callahan's journals reveal that the captain and the crewman got into a heated argument over how to use a water ration. After so many weeks adrift at sea, Callahan's raft eventually became its own mobile ecosystem. A colony of barnacles began to grow on the bottom, which attracted schools of Dorado fish, which Callahan then caught himself to eat. The fish were such constant features that Callahan began to think of them as his doggies. He even grew to recognize individual fish, but hopefully he didn't name any of them, as that would have made catching and eating them a, a little awkward. Unfortunately, the Dorado fish also attracted sharks, who would continuously circle Callahan's raft as a constant reminder he wasn't the only thing out there trying to catch food. Even though he managed to pull a purifier out of his sinking boat, the purifier turned out to be ineffective at converting seawater, so he had to come up with a different method of gathering drinkable water. Callahan rigged a system of balloons and tarps to catch rainwater, and while it only yielded about 20 ounces of drinking water a day, slightly more than a single Dasani bottle, it was enough to keep him alive for 76 days. You might think one of those loitering sharks would have eventually grown tired of the waiting game and popped Callahan's raft, but it was actually one of the smaller Dorado fish that nearly sunk him. As he was fishing one day, one of the Dorados ripped a hole in the bottom of his raft. No matter how many times he patched the rip, it would blow back open every time he tried to reinflate the boat with air. Finally, after a week of dangerous weather and performing rushed repairs with his arms underwater in the middle of a closing ring of sharks, he finally fixed the raft. If you remember the film Castaway, Tom Hanks' character was saved by the first shipping tanker that passed by his barely lashed together raft. That wasn't the case for Callahan. During his 76-day ordeal, no less than seven ships passed within his view, two of which were less than a mile away. Callahan desperately tried to signal them with a flare gun and an emergency radio beacon, but all his attempts failed. It wasn't until he ran across some friendly fishermen off the coast of the Caribbean island of Marie Galante that he was finally rescued. 
Luckily, Callahan was able to fight off total starvation thanks to the fishing line he'd managed to salvage, but he was battling severe malnourishment during his ordeal. By the time he was rescued, Stephen had lost 40 pounds, a third of his body weight. The hunger wasn't the worst of it. The constant exposure to the sun and seawater actually caused his skin to slide off his body, leaving him covered in painful open sores, and us with a solemn promise to never complain about anything ever again unless our skin was simultaneously sliding off our bodies. Callahan's ordeal being stranded for over two months alone at sea made him something of an expert at ocean survival, so director Ang Lee contacted him to act as an advisor on the film Life of Pi. The film deals with the journey of a young boy trapped on a seaborne raft with an adult tiger, and while Callahan praised the movie for being so realistic that it was hard for him to watch, we can't help but wonder whether or not he pointed out to the filmmakers that the presence of a 300-pound tiger on a raft would have forced him to tweak his survival tactics. After recovering from his traumatic experience, Callahan decided to use what he learned while being stranded at sea to develop a design for a better life raft, which he dubbed the Clam. Callahan designed the Clam to be a utility raft, with a canopy to both protect against long exposure to the sun and collect rainwater for drinking, as well as a fiberglass floor that would be immune to tears from reckless fish. In 1986, Callahan wrote a memoir titled Adrift, 76 Days Lost at Sea, which is a story about him being adrift for 76 days lost at sea. It detailed his incredible struggle to survive in unforgettable detail. The book was so popular that it remained on the New York Times bestseller list for several weeks, despite ferocious competition from the Top Gun novelization. Callahan's memoir was adapted for television by the documentary series I Shouldn't Be Alive, which focuses on people who shouldn't be alive. The series retells their stories through interviews and reenactments. Callahan's episode was called 76 Days Adrift, and it aired on November 17, 2010, almost 29 years after he was rescued in the Caribbean. When Stephen Callahan abandoned ship alone in the middle of the ocean, nearly everything was against him. He had almost no food, drinking water, or any reliable navigation equipment. But he managed to survive for 11 weeks, thanks to his ingenuity and determination. What do you think of Steve's story? Leave us a comment below and let us know what you would do if stranded at sea for 76 days.